In this video, I'm going to show you how we set up an SOP template in Notion to make it really easy for our team to create a new SOP, a standard operating procedure, and start to build out your company documentation. Hi, I'm Duncan from Six Five, CEO and founder. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Notion and, and our SOPs. Now, if you haven't watched our previous video about what this, it, like the context of this in terms of the business journey, then go check out that video. That will give you some idea about uh, what's happening in our world and why we're going down this route. I will wait here for you. You can go watch that and you're back. Awesome. One of the things about standard operating procedures is you've got to make it easy for your team to be able to, to create those and define them themselves and then own them themselves. Now, we use Google Sites within Google Workspace. The reason for that is, well, it's free. It was easy to start using, didn't cost us anything, and it gave us the ability to be able to start documenting some stuff, throwing in a, a video, putting in a couple of, um, you know, bullet points and steps in order to be able to show how that stuff works uh, and be able to guide uh, some of the less technical users in our business and actually show them how to go do it and how to make stuff work, right? Um, we're a technology company. Some of those things and some of those tools are a little bit difficult to get around. And my process has always been, well, let me figure out how to do it a few times. And then if I document that well, I can give that to someone and they can then uh, you know, go and replicate that process and make it work. And obviously, if they get stuck, they can reach out. Um, but that process has worked reasonably well in the past. Now, what we've um, started to see though is of course, as we grow, I am now that bottleneck. I can't possibly do that for everything. And the second thing is, uh, we're almost spoon feeding that stuff a bit too much to the team. Um, you shouldn't be in the job that you're in with us if you don't have the ability to know how to log into a system and go find their documentation about how to use stuff and find their support and ask them questions about how to kind of get something done. So as part of this journey, we're going to start moving our procedures out of Google Sites and in that process, simplify them slightly, write them a bit better so they work uh, a bit better. Now, the other key thing uh, to this journey is that in Google Sites, you don't have any ability to have any sort of authorization process. There's no ownership or review process in it. It's literally just a page. I mean, it's a very, very simple website. There's not much in the way of accountability for who owns something and, and, and is there to keep it up to date. The stuff that we found that we can use in Notion, for example, gives us the ability to add some of those features. So let's jump into Notion and I'll show you what it is we're gonna end up with, and then I'll show you how we create it. So this is our new, very new Notion account. And like I say, if you watch that other video, we are literally starting from scratch here. So we have some stuff that um, we've kind of reviewed and looked at in other places and taken some, uh, taken some input in order to be able to figure out how to do this. So we've already got two SOPs. As you can see on the left-hand sidebar here, I've just got this um, bucket for SOPs and we've only got two at this point in time. There's nothing else there. I haven't organized them into departments or anything else like that. But if you click on that SOP, you'll see we've now got uh, this one called zero dollar invoices. And this is something that's gonna need to be repeated. We'll attach it to tasks and stuff later. Um, but this is something that needs to be repeated because for some reason our system generates zero dollar invoices. It's a quite straightforward thing. There's a couple of screenshots in there. This isn't the best example of the end result that we want to create. So I'm going to uh, show you, first of all, how a, a staff member comes along and does this. So they'll simply come to the SOPs page and just go, I'm going to add a new one. So you can either click here and go slash page, and that's going to give us a page inside of this page, or you can click on the plus button on the left of Notion in the toolbar. So I'm just going to click add a page, and uh, I'm gonna call this one Demo SOP, okay? So that's the very first thing. Make sure you give it a title. Um, the, the, the icon thing is, I mean, it's so easy and it's heaps of fun, right? So click the, the add cover as well. Um, okay, a Renaissance painting. Don't know if I want that. Let's uh, change that. Let's go to Unsplash and let's, let's see what happens if we say Demo, all right. Uh, well, it's not a demonstration, is it really? It's more of a product demo. So anyway, let's uh, 
select this one to change the header. There we go, that'll update in a sec. Okay, and as you can see, what's loaded here is uh, we've got some attributes at the top, which is there's some verification uh, of when it's due until. And then we've also got some hints uh, and the structure overall for our SOP is um, the purpose, like what's the purpose of this SOP? And then what is the procedure? Like how do we get it done? Now the really cool thing here is that this template that you're seeing is actually part of the structure. You just click add new in Notion, you say new template, and this gets popped in for everything that's there. So there's a few attributes, so let's start at the top. So I am the owner because I've created this page. I can assign a reviewer, so another member of the team. I can also tag this page. So we've got a bunch of tags already. We can say this is to do with accounting or timesheets, it's a policy, it's an HR, for example, policy. And then we've got to say, well, what is it? Is it full review? Is it draft? So it's always going to start out in draft. And then we've just got the last edited and the created time. And that helps us uh, with other things and other places that we can do stuff. All right, so let's, let's start out with uh, what these instructions say. So we've got a few hints and tips for the creator. And that process says, look, do the, do the uh, SOP and write it. And then the last thing is add a reviewer and change the status to for review. The reviewer then will see this and go, okay, I've got to review this. How does that work? And I'm going to work with a creator um, to refine the procedure once I've read it, if it doesn't make sense. And then I'm going to change the status to approved and add and set the verification for this. So as the creator, I'm now going to read some instructions here and go, right, what have I got to do? What's purpose? In one sentence, concisely explain the purpose or objective of the procedure. All right. How to make a new SOP in Notion, right? That's what our, our, the purpose of this is. So let's change this now from a new SOP, from demo to creating a new SOP, okay? So our purpose is how to make a new SOP in Notion. Right, I don't need the instructions anymore. That's heaps good. What is the procedure? So again, we've got some instructions. It's part of the template. The user comes through and reads this every time. So we're going to state the simple instructions to complete the task. You need to, the what type of verbiage that you're going to use. We're not going to include things like logging into systems and so forth, not required using screenshots or images only if it helps clarify the process. I mean, in most cases, you should be able to get through this without doing, you know, without going into huge amounts of detail. Um, you can mention other processes in Notion. Um, so this is one of the cool things that's really useful here is if this is a small part of several other processes, you can just at uh, mention the other pages that, that are relevant to it. So people can kind of jump backwards and forwards between. Uh, make it easy to use. Do not write. Comments SOPs. Okay, so what we're saying there is that, you know, again, you should be know how to log into the website that you need to use to do this, right? You don't need to write that kind of stuff um, to be able to use the menu and the navigation. I mean, obviously, it helps sometimes if a complex app to say, you know, click here, click here, go there to do that. Sure, no worries at all. Uh, and you need to include enough detail so that the team member that's going to complete it doesn't have to ask any questions, okay? I know we've just got some formatting rules, which is look, keep it simple, right? If it's a straight set of things with some subtasks, use bullets and, and subtasks. Uh, you know, if it's something a bit more complex and you need um, some, some bigger uh, titles on the way down, use H2s. So the big rule here that I've got is uh, make sure that when you write this um, instruction, when you write this SOP, that you should be able to give it to A, a non-starter, uh, sorry, or a new starter, so they don't need really to ask any questions. They should be able to do it with very little knowledge. Someone in a different department who's got nothing to do with SOP, if they read it and go, yeah, that makes sense to me, I could probably give that a good crack and get it done. Perfect, that's what you're after. We've got some instructions, we've got some formatting rules. So let's make uh, an SOP for creating the SOPs. So first up, we want to say, in Notion, find the correct place to start your SOP. Use the left sidebar to find the correct location, right? Um, now I'm new to 
notion. There might be a better way of doing this at this point. I don't know yet. So I'm going to do what I can what I can explain today. And that's one of the great things about these SOPs is they can change over time and they probably will change over time. And I've got a little plan to take those those changes and move them into like a what's new on the company dashboard. So again, we'll come to that as we move forwards. Then we're going to go um, create a new page either by clicking the plus icon next to the parent or, uh, or on the page hit forward slash page to create a new one. All right, either way in the pop-up you will see a list of templates to choose from and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, illustrate this just to make it nice and easy. Let's get my little screenshot tool up. There it is. Okay, cool screenshot. Uh, I can give this a little arrow if I want. Why not? There it is. Let's pop another arrow in here. We're going to do that to select those. Click on copy uh, in the pop-up. Create a new one. All right. So there's our P there's our um, uh, image is going in there, perfect. And then what I also want is I want a picture of the next one, which is this bit here. So here's my new SOP, and I'm going to uh, screenshot that so that you get some context about what's exactly is going to occur. And then we're going to select the SOP template. So again, I'm going to copy that. I uh, actually don't need to keep this one, so I'm going to delete that page. And then I'm just going to paste that in here. Select standard operating. All right, so that'll create the new page. All right, so now I've done this, okay? And now my, uh, so I've done that, I've added an icon and a header, or let's just change our reposition. There's our man getting his, getting his demo on with his um, uh, 3D goggles, virtual goggles. Change the icon, add a header, add the purpose and procedure. There's the purpose, I've done the procedure. Add tags to the page. Um, so I probably need to put some better tags in, which is, I'm gonna create one actually called documentation. Documentation, there we go. Perfect. And then I'm going to add a reviewer in a stack and I'm going to change the status to for review. So let's do that. Documentation draft, I'm going to change that to for review. And I don't have anyone else in this workspace yet, but that's going to now be for review. So um, we are in a good place. I'm going to remove the verification. So that's me now creating an SOP from that. But how does that template actually get created in the first place? So let's come back to our SOPs. And what I'm going to do is hit slash, click new page, and here's our template. Now what happens here is when you create a page, you can make it a template. So I can click on new template to create one, and then I can call it SOP, and I can add all of that content in here. Uh, I'm going to, oh, there you go. See, now I've got a, an untitled, so I can get rid of that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on edit for my SOP. And whatever you do in this template, when you create a new one, it is going to use those defaults. I had an attribute that was already defaulting the verification date, which was not actually correct. So I need to um, customize that page and I want to uh, show the verification. I want to show the owner. So again, you can see we've got some properties uh, in the Notion page and I also want to show the verification, and I probably also want to show the tags. All right, so those are the key bits of information that I need on every single page. I want to know who I need to contact if I get a problem with this. I want to know what those tags are. I want to know what the verification is. There's one thing I'd like to add to this, is if there's a video. Uh, so I'm going to just add a little section to this, just so you can see how I put this together. So uh, I've made an H2 there. Uh, now I want a toggle list. And I want another toggle because 
oh, well, actually, let's just do this first. Inside instructions, I want some text. So what we're saying here is because uh, a lot of our SOPs have been done using a video, and there's nothing wrong with that, uh, well, that documents the process. I mean, actually, there is one thing wrong with that video, is that it goes out of date pretty quick because software and stuff updates and changes all the time, user interface changes and so forth. So it's one of the really good reasons why you should try and avoid doing videos for SOPs. And that's why I'm gonna, uh, in here, I'm gonna hide it, okay? So that's the first thing. I need that uh, there is a video and embed it uh, in the collab collapsible uh, area below, okay? All right, the second thing I need to do there is I wanna have the video transcribed. So transcribing a video is really important, especially in motion. Now, the reason for that is that uh, having the transcription allows that content to then be searchable. It might not necessarily be in the bullet points, all of that information, but it allows it to be searchable. And that is key when you're using the search bar in the top left of Notion, right? Uh, if you've got that content inside of the page and you go, I want to search you know, a video about SOPs, it will also use that transcription as, as something that is a potential search result. Um, that's going to be really key for us moving forwards as well when we start looking at uh, using our SOPs and documentation to potentially train a chatbot as well um, for internal support, for sales, for other things like that too. So I'm going to make two toggles here. I'm going to use a uh, emoji. So I'm on a, a Mac, so I'm going to push Control, Command, and Space. I want a, a video icon. Where are we? Oh, you know, why not? That one will do. Put a space in there. And then I want a transcription icon. So I want a script icon, maybe. Does one of those exist? Journal, perhaps. Yeah, there we go. That'll be sort of like a, a script, wouldn't it? It's not the best. It'll do. There we go. So then we've got the video and transcription. And finally, I want to tell people, look, if there's no video in there, we'll get rid of the SOP as well. I just want to get the instructions and I want to change the color on that as well because I've been using sort of this pink color as the, oops, no, not like that. <laughs> I don't want to change the color to pink. Let's go back to default there. Let's change the background color. There it is to pink. Okay, happy days. So now I've got a video with instructions, the video and the transcription. Now, because I've made those changes, I don't have to do anything else now, but if I now come and create a new page, click on SOP, that is now going to load and you can see the tags are empty now, the verification is empty and we've now got that video content, those instructions are already there. And if there is no video on this particular page, we go bang and delete it, all right? That has not changed my template, by the way. I know this one is, is named the same, but this is actually a new page. So if I come back to SOPs and I go slash page, add a new page, I can now click on SOP. It will name it as SOP. Standard operating procedure, it names it as the template. So that's the first thing you want to do is change it because otherwise you're going to end up with 100 of these. So now I've got my SOP page, I've got my template. I can now give this to uh, our team and say to them, right, start pulling those SOPs we have in Google Sites, start structuring them, creating those pages inside of this bucket in this particular place in Notion, and let's start getting everything transferred so we've got some ownership to it and it's easy, more, much more easily searchable. So I hope you found this useful. This is, like I say, part of our journey in uh, sort of uh, tech transformation, I guess, for a tech company as well. You'd think we'd have all this lined up, but we don't. If you found this useful, uh, I will link the Notion template below so that you can pick that up if you want to use it. And thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next video.